Hello, Spartonians. Happy uh, Tuesday, April 18th, 2023. Again, you guys know I'm out of the classroom today. I'm in the uh, office attending a department meeting this morning. So in my stead is a first of one, two, three video lectures. I know you guys have prom coming up on Friday. And as I said yesterday, you guys are wanting to, you have the ability to, should you want, to work ahead and make sure your Fridays are clear so you can get ready for the festivities uh, that are taking place this weekend. So feel free to work uh, as fast as you are able. You can see the agenda today. Today I'm talking about real estate, commodities, and collectives. Uh, you have a couple of discussion questions to answer, and this is just for me to check in, make sure uh, you are processing and understanding what it is that I'm talking about since we can't do it in person via discussion. Uh, and then your homework assignment for today, for tomorrow's video lecture, is chapter 14, 1 through 11, where we're talking about mutual funds. And I can't stress this enough. This is undoubtedly what each and every one of you will be invested in in the future, so we want to pay close attention to this. Before I move on to the lecture, let me remind you to turn in chapter 13's reading guide. Yesterday, you did questions 21 through 30 to wrap up that assignment. So make sure that gets submitted today before the end of class if you have not already done so. Let's get into it. Uh, real estate. We are talking about investments here. We've been talking about investments now for a couple of weeks. And I just need to stress for you, because I don't want to dash anybody's interest in real estate. What the book is talking about and what we are talking about is for the common average American who is investing their 20% of money, should be 20%. If you can get close, if you can do it, do it. If you can do more, do that. But even if you're a little less, it's better than nothing. What we're talking about is people who are making investments with their savings, right? So they can pay themselves uh, in the future, right? What the, book is, uh, what the book isn't talking about and what I'm not talking about are the career uh, real estate people, people who are going into real estate for a business. It's just like what we were talking about when it comes to being invested in securities, right? We're not talking about the people who are working 40 to 70 hours in security investments, and we're not talking about real estate developers, real estate uh, businesses. Um, again, this is for the people who are trying to generate money for the future. With that in mind, um, real estate is not the safest thing in which you can invest your money. When we're talking about percentages and almost guarantees, real estate isn't the greatest thing for you to be invested in because it opens up a whole can, can, can of worms that you are responsible for. And when it comes to real estate, when you have more to deal with, what we're talking about is you have more expense. You have more of your uh, income being eaten up by that. Uh, case in point, you know, two thirds of Americans uh, own their home. It is probably the largest expense that they will have in their lifetime. When we get further into um, loans and compound interest, um, you know, what you have to wrap your head around is that if you buy a $400,000 home at two and a half, 2.6% interest, the interest for that home over the course of a 30 year mortgage is $500,000. So you bought a $400,000 house and you're paying $500,000 in interest. And that's at 2.6%. 2, 2 uh, real estate is exceptionally expensive. And that's just the cost of the home. We're not talking about the annual property taxes. We're not talking about the annual upkeep. There's a whole list of expenses that you have to pay for. And we'll get into that in future weeks. So again, what we're talking about here is solely from the purpose of investing. And again, it is not a guarantee. Um, it, is not, it is not nearly as predictable and it is not nearly statistically close to being guaranteed as investing in the market and investing in companies. Because we know we have a proven track record that our economy, although there may be some down years, our economy continues to grow and continues to get better. So you are pretty close to having a guaranteed income return from investing in that. You don't have that when it comes to real estate. All right. And a little side story here. The house in the picture was the house that my wife and I were going to buy. Beautiful home. Days before we were going to put in an offer, George Floyd and you know, the tragic situation with George Floyd happens two blocks away. This was 38th and Elliott. George Floyd was killed on 39th in Chicago. 
two blocks away. That house sold. It sold weeks, months later, excuse me, but it lost 40% of its value. So whoever bought that home, whoever owned that home, who, who improved that home, renovated that home, lost 40% of their projected returns. Again, real estate can be unpredictable. And you can go from one city in one corner of the United States all the way across the United States to another city in another corner of the country and point out neighborhoods that were considered to be safe, lucrative investments, and it didn't turn out to be, right? It is difficult to predict where humans are going to, to live. You know, we look at the first half of the 20th century. By the 1920s, a majority of Americans lived in cities. By the 1950s, Americans were fleeing the cities to the suburbs. 1990s, early 2000s, Americans were fleeing the suburbs, what we would call the exburbs, right? Those outside the suburbs. And now in the 21st century, you've got Americans moving back into a more urban area, right? These habits are really hard to predict. Not to mention when you own real estate, when you are invested in real estate, if it is generating a return for you, you are paying taxes on it. You are paying income tax on it. Versus if you are invested in the market, you are not paying taxes on it until you sell it, until you take your money out. Furthermore, while you own property, you are paying property taxes on it. And again, don't even get me started. Don't even get me started on the upkeep for these homes. Again, so when we're talking about trying to generate money for us in the future, real estate isn't necessarily the safest thing. If you're going to go into real estate as a business, as a career, have have at it. But what we're talking about here is just the common investor trying to generate a nest egg for them. When it comes to real estate, you have direct investment, meaning you own it, or you have indirect investment, it means you're putting money into a pool of money with other investors and you are buying properties, you are buying land as a collective group. All right. There are advantages and disadvantages to both of these things. Again, if you own real estate and you are renting it out to people, you're paying taxes on it. If you're a part of a group, um, you know, it can it can generate some money for you. And as you're as that mutual that that uh, real estate investment trust continues to grow, you're making more money. And again, you wouldn't necessarily pay taxes on that until you withdraw it. But again, it's not going to be guaranteed that the value of that collective group of investors is going to increase. Hopefully this makes sense to you. Um, I have a lot of friends who are, who have bought land. They just bought empty land. Again, ne not necessarily the greatest investment because while you just own undeveloped land, you're paying taxes on it and it's not generating you any money. So again, not the, not the soundest investment. Probably one of the greater greater dangers of real estate is the illiquidity of real estate, the illiquidity of land. Now, we reviewed this yesterday in class. Liquidity being liquid means you have access to cash quick. Illiquidity is the opposite of that. It's not covered in your textbook, but I, again, I just looked this up. The average amount of time that it takes to close on a property, whether it being land, a condo, or a house, it doesn't matter where. The average closing date from the time that you put it up on the market, getting a buyer and then closing on the sale, meaning you get your money, they get the property, is on average 50 days. That is exceptionally illiquid, especially if you need that money now. So again, when it comes to growing money for the future, I don't know if real estate is the surest thing. Now we need to talk about commodities and collectibles. Because your book kind of ropes them together. And I don't find I don't agree with that. Now, collectibles, if we're talking magazines, baseball cards, collector cars, those are quite literally collectibles. You buy something, you make a profit, you hope to make a profit in the future. That is the definition of speculation. The only time that you are making money is when you sell it. It does not generate income while you own it doesn't generate income while it's sitting in a safety deposit box or a safe at your home or on the shelf. Doesn't generate, collectibles do not generate money while you own it. And again, the only way you make money is if you sell it for more than what you bought it for. And again, that's not a guarantee. Gold coins, um, the list could go, I mean, we could just go, I've already said it. 
their only value is to whomever is buying it. And that's not a guaranteed thing in the future. Now, commodities is something that your book hasn't necessarily addressed. And it's something that we do need to address because people do invest in commodities. A commodity is anything of value that is typically a raw material and it is made into something else. So food can be commodities, right? Oil can be commodities. Gold can be commodities. Silver can be commodities. Platinum, copper, any of those things. Those are all commodities. Those are naturally produced raw materials. I wouldn't put them in the category of collectibles. And I wouldn't put them necessarily in the category of speculation. You can invest in those things. Um, is their price volatile? Yes. Would it require you to know uh, when, when it's the time to buy and when is the time to sell? Absolutely. Are they less guaranteed um, as investing in, in other securities associated with uh, companies? Most definitely. But right now, if you look at the price of gold, the price of gold is increasing because there's there's some speculation that the Chinese are going to try to, to change their currency to being backed by gold. If they are trying to buy up all the world's gold supply so they can churn, change their currency from something called the fiat system to a gold standard. And the gold standard is what the United States used to be on. It's what the world used to be on prior to 1972. Um, so the price of gold right now is going through the roof. Typically gold, silver, uh, those two commodities are somewhat valuable, largely because countries used to have their, their money backed by that. What gave the dollar its value, what gave the pound its value, is those things used to represent a certain amount of gold or a certain amount of silver. Uh, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't not look at investing in uh, commodities such as, as gold or silver. Uh, but again, when we're talking about the average investor who is just trying to guarantee money for the future, um, you know, maybe that's not the greatest thing for you. Because again, it is, it does fluctuate with the market. Um, for the average investor, for the, you know, what we're talking about generating money for the future, I'd probably keep our money uh, invested in companies um, associated with a country's economy that has known and has consistent track record of continuous growth from one decade to the next. That is what I got for real estate and commodities and collectibles. Uh, two discussion questions to answer. Copy and paste the questions into the comments section. Reply to the questions. Click post. You've got question, uh, questions 1 through 11. Chapter 14, the reading guide. It is on mutual funds. I'll post the next video for that. Uh, and we'll just keep on working this week. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, I most likely will not see you guys until next week. So make sure you're listening to the guest teacher. Keep on keeping on and go Spartans.